We lost him for a bit. We're attempting to be the first four-wheel drives to drive every challenge and open up the old telly for the season. To be quite frank, the last thing we needed was more water. Probably the deepest water crossing we've ever tried. With road closures that stopped us in our tracks, detours that we didn't plan on taking, and tracks that are simply unrecognisable. It's probably a metre deeper than normal, but someone has to drive it first. Oh, no. Chewie, you're not moving. I actually need help, guys. I can't understand. Just to get to the start of the old telly track has been a mammoth mission on its own. Did it turn off? Oh, she's deep. Not one single vehicle had been through the real crossing of Palm Creek. And the mud, well, it was bottomless. Tell you about getting stuck before you get to the creek. Fuck, I've never seen it this tough before. Oh, a little amount of mud at the front here. That's why. I've basically got traction, but I've got, unfortunately, about three cube of mud in front of the old sooty here. We're hardly two kilometres into the old telly track, and I've never been bogged my chassis here. If this is an indication of what's to come, I'd say we're in for one hell of an adventure. Palm Creek is one of the more unforgiving challenges anywhere, and it can require some huge winches to pull yourself up and out of the mud. But there's zero doubt, this is the walls I've ever seen it. Well, Sean's been struggling to get to this point out of the creek, he's not even at the hill yet, so he's got his work cut out from his bottom step. I'm gonna wish him luck for this one, because it's, it's a tough start. Super muddy. Yeah, like. super muddy. <laughs> Quite a challenge. I can't hit that any harder though, I don't want to break anything. Attempting the old telly this early in the season is no easy feat. And it's really important that your vehicle is well equipped. I think we'll be winching this one. Not hanging around. Getting into Palm Creek is one thing, but getting out is quite another. The exit out is steep, slippery, and a rutted climb out to level ground. Same spot. It's Palm Creek 5, four wheel drive 24 7 0. As the rumba comes out again. Even so, it's been cool to be the first vehicles to take on the challenge for the year. If this is any indication of what's ahead, though, we're going to be in for our wildest old telly trip ever. Palm Creek Hardline officially open for the season. Open for the season. I'm stoked. I'm really, yeah. I'm, I'm really stoked about this. This yeah. is. You should be. And I've got, got that feeling. It's going to be our hardest. Yeah. I'll tell you, track. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. We've yeah. never done one this hard. We're just a few k's into the track, and ahead of us lies at least 20 more crossings, such as Gunshot, Cockatoo, and of course the biggest of all, Nolan's Creek. With so much water around, whether we can make it is anyone's guess. But I'll tell you what. We're gonna have a whole lot of fun trying. That is really deep. <laughs> Crazy about doing the old telly this year is this is the main track we're driving. There's mud and water everywhere. Normally this would be a dusty dirt road. You'd, you'd have to spread the convoy out because the dust would get the guys behind you. And <laughs> well, it's anything but dusty at the moment. You just never know. That little puddle over the road is gonna be nice and shallow half bottom or you're going to sink down your chassis rails. <laughs> That's after the adventure though, right? With every corner we turn, it's evident the track has completely changed. Before long, we're pointing the rigs at one challenge that defines Cape York, Gunshot Creek. Every season brings new lines and new challenges and this year is no different. Well, this is the infamous gunshot, and I've never, ever seen a lot of this before, it's mate. unrecognisable since last year, I reckon. Yeah, it really is. It goes to show you get a big wet season through here, lots of water. The water in the wet season, to keep in mind, would be over mm, our heads in definitely. here, and just a raging torrent. So a lot of earth moves around. What's happened is gunshot's really been just filled in. But I still think we're going to have a work cut out for us, because as you can see, it's really off cambered. It's really sloppy down there, so the vehicle's going to naturally want to just scrape mm. its whole roof along this it's wall pretty soft right here. down there, too. Oh, really, really off yeah. so just started raining i think the only way to tackle this one get some shovels out maybe cut the edge of that yeah. fill this in fill it in and try and make a bit of a road here 
It's not long before all the boys are hard at work. Guess that's the beauty of being the first through for the season. The drop in a gunshot is one thing, but the creek itself is looking pretty different this year too. It's deeper and muddier than ever, with plenty of trees down to boot. For the first time in a long time, I'm not scared about the gunshot actual drop in because that's nothing, that's a step. But coming down here, you've got a bunch of quicksand and it gets into some deep water with a lot of leaf litter. So the whole ground is made up of this organic sort of leaf litter, which means that you've got about a metre of leaf litter, so you can actually go down a long way. My problem is if I'm going to come in here as a first vehicle, the old passenger side of the suit's going to sink right down. I'm going to get stuck about here, I reckon, if not before I even hit the water. And I'll have to find a way to winch. Righto, mate, bring Sooty down. First car through gunshot. Down we go. Not much of a drop this year. Beautiful, mate. She's coming down now. Nice and slow. She got Bendix brake upgrade on it. A little bit left now, you know what? It works a tree, you've actually stopped the vehicle. Steer, steer, to the, steer to the left, steer to the left if you can. Yep, yeah, stay straight at that, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's you. Too easy, it's a bit soft on her side, but keep the car at the bank. Uh, we're just getting Sean's winch rope out. We're going to connect it to this extension before he drives through because I didn't see him walk it, but he said it's very boggy through here. So uh, we could be in for some dramas. When you're so certain you're going to get bogged, you may as well be prepared. And that's what we're sort of doing. Got a nice big anchor point. If I go down, I think the run is going to have to work so hard to get me out. It's just bottomless, this stuff. Uh-oh. Yeah, you might have to do a little winch to pop out. Yep, just like I suspected. There's solid ground underneath, but you've got to get through about half a metre of silt first. Thought for a split second I was going to actually drive that. <laughs> Silly me. Pushing like a massive man on that front side. Both sides, actually. That's wild. The entire wet season of leaf and silt is under the front of Sooty here. Taking the leaf litter, opening up gunshot boys. You're first. making a canal. I knew that bit of it was going to be soft, but I thought the rest of it you drive, no worries. You know what, heaps of fun though, and the, the tricky bit, it changes every year. You oh, normally, yeah. as soon as you do gun shot, you just drive through. Mm. That was one of the harder winches I've ever had to do. Yeah. yeah so there's all this leaf lit up. This was just sand before, and now, look at it. There's huge handfuls of that, that come out of the bottom of sooty. Sean's mulch supplies. <laughs> oh, exactly right. You can tell you this the city actually sell this organic mulch. Tell you what, anything will grow in there. I've actually decided to change the order around a little bit. We've got another bigger vehicle coming through, so hopefully Pete can actually clear more of this mulch. It's gonna actually open the track up and make it a lot easier for the smaller slung vehicles like Jesse and the D-Max and, and um, other vehicles that come through the year. See, hey, bulldozing's already happening. Just like we did with Sooty, we're gonna hook up Pete before he gives a crossing a crack been early in the season and with this much water we want to be as quick as possible here. See? Look at that. Beautiful. A quick reset in the middle and he's good to go. Nice work mate. Is there any more traction there, eh? Yeah. I was pretty stuck in this. Oh bit. yeah. Like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. I think that was pretty good, to be that honest. That was like chalk and cheese compared to yours. It just shows how much silt you actually pushed out of there. Yeah, I reckon I cleared a hell of a lot of silt out of that track. You can Most actually definitely. see the wheel tracks now. And more vehicles go through, We're actually creating the track, which is quite a cool. Yeah. Jesse, I reckon, is going to drive it. <laughs> He's made the call. That's wow. the call. I might drive the track around the outside. Right? <laughs> Liam's up next in the big steady rig. Radio, here he comes down the first step. 
It's going to be a very tight squeeze to the big 200 through here, I think. He's only in three wheel drive still, too, but luckily his drive wheel is on the low side. Slipping down, making the track a fair bit wider for us. Here we go. It's getting quite boggy in the bottom now. Just as I suspected. Bugger, the front is dug right in. As each vehicle comes down, it's pushing more and more mud to the bottom of the step. I've got a feeling you won't be the only one winching here. Look at him work. He's great on the shovel. You can tell he's a plumber. <laughs> With a quick pull of the run, but Liam's good to go. Now for the main challenge. Not bad for three wheel drive. Nice work, Liam. You did that with ease, mate. Woo, I'm through. First time at gunshot. Still pretty intimidating, this double drop into it. Nice work, Az. Slowly. Give it a little dry when you get down. Very Beautiful. Well played, very well played. Go. go, 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 go. Drive it, mate, drive it. Back over this way, steer us here, over. Nice work, Az. Back up a little. Well, as the car's going through, this fog hole section here is definitely getting easier. The actual drop-in is the hard bit now. People are actually dropping in and winching from there. I don't know, we'll have to see what we reckon, but I reckon I might even be able to give this a go on the D-Max now. A bit of leaf loose taken out. Dropping off now. Oh my God, that made a scary noise. That's me. Just like the 200, Jesse will need a quick winch to get him out of the creek. I've got a feeling that he might just drive the next section though. Yeah, drive, 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 drive. He's got it. He might have this. He's got it. Well done, Jesse. <laughs> the best drive yet. <laughs> nearly got it, nearly. <laughs> How good is that? I mean, he drove all that water on his own, got out of the water, and just needs to winch over that last little lip. For a little D-Max on 32 and a half inch tyres, not bad at all. It smells like prawns in here. What's yeah, going? it's... What's going on? <laughs> it kind of smells like Daryl in here. I was feeling a bit homesick, so, um, <laughs> yeah. Don't ask, don't ask. I'll shut, I'll shut that door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. I was a bit uh, sad I had to wait till last. Obviously, I had to winch that first bit, but it worked out perfect for me in the water. And with that, we're all through gunshot, and it's officially open for the season, and we're one step closer to making it to the tip. As we continue to push north, we can't help but notice some ominous looking clouds on the horizon. Hopefully, not a sign of what's to come. Rain is the last thing we need right now. It's not long before we come across a fallen tree over the road. It always pays to carry a chainsaw, especially when attempting the old telly this early in the season. One of the things, if you keep your eyes peeled driving the old telegraph track, you'll see the old telegraph lines. Now, just about to pass one at the moment, it's still got the timber stay on the top of the telegraph pole, which is remarkable. Most of them have fallen over by now, and a lot of them are gone altogether. You've got to keep in mind, this was the original telegraph line. So communications for the very north of Australia, and I think even New Guinea, to Australia and the rest of the world, all came down through here. It's pretty remarkable when you think about it. Just imagine the vehicles back in the day actually servicing this track. Talk about adventurous. As is the case with Cape York, it's challenge after challenge. It's not long until we come to another creek crossing. 
and judging by the look of this one, it might spell the end of our Cape York adventure. This is Cockatoo Creek, and for the most part, it's not usually really a challenge. However, this time around, the water levels are higher than I've ever seen it before, and to make matters worse, it's flowing super fast. Well, I reckon we're the first to cross here by the looks. No tyre tracks whatsoever. That's Four. flowing. That is deep. Normally, you drive down here and the creek doesn't start till over there. It's probably half a metre to a metre deeper than normal, but as the saying goes, someone has to drive it first. That's just a, that's a fact. That is a fact, and you happen to be that someone. <laughs> it's so deep, we can't even walk this one. And being this early in the season, with the risk of crocs, it pays to be cautious here. To be quite frank, the last thing we needed is more water. <laughs> <laughs> the wet season hasn't finished yet. I, I'm still undecided. I think I want to give this a go. But what's going to happen, I think we might change the order around, Pete. Nice heavy vehicle behind me with the winch. If I get stuck, it's going to be right there. And you'll be able to winch me back to safety and then we can reconsider. If I make it, well then I'll just keep going and I'll turn the corner and drive over there and high five myself because I'll be the only one over there. <laughs> and then... I think you make it. i got faith in you. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy when you're not driving the first car. This is pretty wild. We're going to give it a go. Yeah, just getting to the creek's hard enough. Can we just, uh, just pull a bit of that bank down? It's pretty wild. Another group of guys have come on the other side of Cockatoo Creek. I'm the guinea pig for both crews. Just like Palm Creek, we're gonna to have to winch ourselves into Cockatoo. This is absolutely wild. It's a first in all my years of coming to Cape York. All right, this is exciting. This is, this is what it's all about. You know what to do if it all goes pear-shaped, eh? Yeah. Right, seatbelts off in case I need to abandon ship. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck, mate. All the best. See you on the other side. Now, the only reason I'm giving this a go is because I actually know the line very well. You've got to drive down the bank and turn a sharp left to avoid some serious holes in the middle. And with the water levels this high, hitting one of them could spell absolute disaster. Straight through. Yes. Good job. There we go. Didn't feel that easy in there. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it'd be fine. Eh? He was a bit nervous, but he did perfect. Just nice bow wave. Yeah, proper deep. Yeah. Yeah, and that's definitely the line. It's much shallower up there. After the convoy on the northern side watched Tootie cross, they've opted to turn around and head back the direction they've come from. I don't blame them either. Pete's up next in his three-liter GU, but something tells me he'll be following my line to a T. Cool, calm and collected. Nice work, mate. You nailed the throttle control on this one. Well done, mate. Well done. Awesome. Textbook. It was perfect. Yeah, yeah, straight through it. Very deep. Big bow wave, but nothing stops Pete. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. Jesse's up next and he's absolutely frothing this adventure. Something tells me he'll be pretty keen to reach this side of the river. Good luck, mate. Pretty wild, I had to winch to get into the river crossing and I'm the smallest, lightest, most floatable car now and <laughs> I'm on my own. So uh, hopefully I can make it to the other boys. If not, I uh, might see us on the west coast somewhere. He's gonna drive in, we've got the big 200 behind him. If he gets stuck halfway through, well then if it's closer to come back the other side, the 200 can pull him back. Pete's just about to back up now as well. I'm gonna leave that winch rope in the front of his bull bar. If he gets stuck, I'm swimming. I'm gonna run out there, grab that winch rope, swim it back over to Pete and he can winch his way all the way through, so fingers crossed, eh? Radio, here goes nothing. Have fun, mate. <laughs> Wish me luck. It's a window up. That hasn't gone to plan. Yep, no. Nah. Oh, this is so sketchy. I got a bit of speed now. Oh, it feels better now. Whoa, this is wild. A little D Max, that could. <laughs> Oh, you can see the water there. I'm coming over. This is crazy. 
<laughs> this way. Off to a slow start, but whoa! <laughs> Woo! Well, I went up to a bit of a slow start. <laughs> I thought I'd celebrate way too early, but I got going. There's gonna be some funny faces on that camera. You made it, mate. I bet you were absolutely <laughs> clenching the everything. Yeah. Any water inside? No, nah, no, I don't think so. Dry as a bone. Super dry, yeah. It's a bit on the seat, mate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of yellow water. All right, let's give this a go. Oh, far out. Oh, geez, that didn't sound good. Oh, whoopsie daisy. Oh, <laughs> oh no. What have you done? <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things, mate. Oh, no. Give it a bit, mate. Give it a bit. Here we go, mate. There's no turning back now. With a new battle scar to rep, Liam is home and dry. <laughs> oh, this is a stitch up. <laughs> the camera car is up next. I thought I was next, but it turns out Chewy in the camera car is going next. So I'm going to have to do all the work on my own over here if I get stuck here. That's how these things go sometimes. Straight. Oh, that's a lot of wheel spin. A lot of wheel spin. Way too much wheel spin. Oh, no. The problem here is the camera car diffed out in the soft sand and it's filling fast with water. While we don't recommend this, I rushed over to try and help them get going. Chewie, you're not moving. Just keep, your wheels aren't even spinning. Jeez, just enough traction. Nice work, boys. <laughs> Keep going straight, keep going straight, keep going straight, keep going. Left, left, left. Straight this bank. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that was pretty loose. Lucky last, eh? The mid truck is up next and as is only one direction he can go and that's forward. With no vehicles left behind him, he won't be able to get recovered backwards. So fingers crossed he actually drives this. Chewed up. Wow, there's just enough traction left there. I reckon it was that helping hand there, mate. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going. Left now. Left, straight oh. across here. That's it, keep going. Woo! Let's go right up to the oh. camera. Woo! Oh man. <laughs> A little bit of water in there. Oh. With some wet carpets and a few new battle scars, that marks all the vehicles on the northern side of Cockatoo. That's one to remember. It's got to be one of the crazier crossings we've ever attempted on the old telly track. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Normally, when I come through here, mate, I'm I might be eating a biscuit, listening to a podcast, and I just cruise around. Yeah, normally this is one of the cruisy crossings, but not today. It was wild. Got to be honest, though. I at the start when I first looked at it, I thought. Yeah, this, you talked yourself out this, of it. This, this might have us beaten. Yeah. And I had a little quiet chat with Jesse. Do you know what got me? You said, if I had my GQ here, I'd do it. And I said, yeah. right, <laughs> right, right, I'm giving it a That's going. what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> we made it, and it's so much better on this side. If this crossing has not been driven, can you imagine Nolan's, Mistake, yeah. Cannibal? It's going to be a couple it's more. It's going to be... <laughs> They're gonna be super deep. I reckon we'll collect our little wet sandy soles out of here now, <laughs> try and find maybe a campsite that'll get up there on that track and hopefully that sun comes out. To make it onto this side of the crossing feels like a huge achievement and well, a bit of a relief too. We're only day one into the old telly and something tells me we might have started something that we might not be able to finish. Even getting back up to the main track is hard. The wet season has destroyed any obvious exits, and the conditions, well, they're not helping with traction. Oh, yeah. There we go. I've got to say, that was one of the more epic days on the tracks you'll ever find. But as you can see, it has gotten dark, 
we're going to be arriving to camp at night, which is no big deal. And it makes it very easy, I suppose, when you've got some good quality lights at the front of your vehicle. Now, myself and many other people in the convoy are running steadies. I'm running actually the Type X uh, Sports on the front of Sooty here, combined with a 50 inch light bar. And I reckon the combination of a, a good quality light bar on your roof and a couple of good driving lights is absolutely spot on because it means I can see what's going on the peripherals, so nice and wide if an animal starts to jump out or something like that. But also, my spotlights go straight down that track and I can see what's going on because this time of year, heaps of washouts down the front, there's water, there's mud, bog holes, you name it, you've got to be really alert when you're driving, especially at night. It really does help when you can see. With a huge day under our belt, it's time to roll out some canvas, crack a cold one, and settle in for the night. And judging by the conditions of the old telly track today, we've got a huge few days ahead of us. For the price of a six pack, you could literally win this Land Cruiser here, a Toyota 79 Series Land Cruiser GXL with over $99,000 worth of mods, plus over $140,000 worth of cashable gold bullion in a total prize package valued at $330,000. You'd be mad not to enter. But more importantly, every ticket sold helps fund cancer research at MARTA. And it really couldn't be any easier to enter. Simply go to the website carsforcancer.com.au, get yourself a ticket, just have another look at that 79 again. Imagine driving home with that. Hope you guys are enjoying our Cape York adventure and I'm actually super excited at the moment because the Melbourne 4x4 show is fast approaching and Jock and myself are going to be down there. It's on the 18th to the 20th of August, so grab yourself some tickets at 4x4show.com.au and don't forget to use the promo code FULLDRIVE247 to save yourself a little bit of money at the checkout. And make sure you bring a massive backpack because the show is going to be packed full of show specials and all your favourite full drive and camping gear and you're not going to go home empty handed, there's plenty of money to be saved. We'll uh, see you down there on the 18th to the 20th. With showers through the night, the morning light revealed a wet camp. Something tells me we'll be in for less than favourable conditions today. We don't waste much time and soon enough camp is packed up and we're giving the rigs a quick once over. Stiff oil, bit of, a, bit of a shame, but I sort of do a daily walk around sort and I noticed a little bit of oil just seeping out. It's actually dripping out of the front of the transfer, so I'm guessing it's the front input shaft, the transfer case. It's nothing to be super alarmed about at this moment. I just gotta make sure it just gets topped up for the diff oil. But do need a transfer case, especially for this sort of part of the trip. We're gonna need four-wheel drive and all of it. After a huge day on the tracks yesterday and a late arrival into camp, I reckon one spot I've marked on the map ahead will have the boys frothing. <laughs> That's right, Elliot Falls. This place is one of the most iconic swimming spots in Cape York, and for good reason too. It marks the halfway point on the old telly track, and it's a bloody good spot to cool off and have a wash, especially after the hard yards we put in yesterday. Judging by the boys, I reckon they're absolutely loving it. It's another Cape York trip. If you don't stop at some of the iconic water holes like this, we've got a couple of Cape York first timers with us, and they're over there absolutely frothing it. So I reckon it's time for me to jump into. Not long before we're pushing north again, with one challenge coming up that's always treacherous, Scrubby Creek. And this year, it doesn't look any easier, with an off camper drop in, a boggy hole at the bottom, and a 40 metre crossing. This one can catch out even the most seasoned four wheel driver. Well, we've come to another crossing and it hasn't been driven this year. The drop in's actually bigger than the gunshot was this year, and there's a big sandbar in the middle, so Sean reckons he's not gonna sink, but it could be quite soft out there. Let's bring him down and see how he goes. All right, here we go. Nudging down. Oh, I can't feel terrible in the lens, is Yeah. <laughs> you make it look easy. 
It's gonna be yeah. quite, quite boggy. Steer to the right a little bit too. Right, right. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of silt in the bottom of that. Here we go. Another steep little drop in like gunshot. Sean's bull bar moved a lot of the silt, so hopefully there's enough room for the D-Max, but uh, time will tell. Very steep. It's quite steep, isn't it? Proper steep. Here we go, we're in. Oh, geez, mate. The D-Max ploughed the rest of that mud. Beautiful. Yeah, how good's that? I think, I think if I went first, it would have been different. You could leave a lot of mud out with your bull bar. This is the next bit, it's usually the date bit, so yeah. we'll see how we go. I can already see the river sand. I'm starting to sink down in that already, just yeah. sitting there, so we might get through. I'll get stuck. Uh, yeah, we'll send someone in there. Come help. <laughs> you shouldn't have gone for the gear change. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, you might need to pull us back, mate, and I'll have another go at this. Hopefully it gets firmer as we get into the mud. Wow, I didn't expect that. It's pretty much quicksand. A little inch backwards from Jesse, and I'll give that another go. Right oh. Wow, that's wild! <laughs> Off we go. Come on, get some traction. Come on. Just going. Just going. Just going. Get him out. <laughs> no way! Did not expect that big off cam, but a huge hole out in there. I think the key there was I didn't absolutely bury it. I actually backed off the throttle and it was spinning, but didn't bury me down. Just kept trucking away. That was loose. That was proper loose. <laughs> yeah, Jesse, I reckon uh, stick close to that bank, mate. I'll um, get ready with soot. If you go down, it's going to reverse up to the bank and run and grab that wind rope. Sounds good, mate. That looked bl bloody wild when you come through, so hopefully I can make it as far as I can. Good luck is all I can say. You can see just how little traction there is here. Picking the line is tricky as well, with zero visibility and a lot of soft silt underneath. And it's just caught Jesse out. Proper deep. It didn't help that you had to follow Sooty, mate. I only just made it through. In these situations, it pays to be prepared, and it isn't long before we have the D-Max out of trouble. Some wet carpets, but all in all, a solid recovery. That was wild. Same crossing got me last year. <laughs> yeah, it pays to be extra careful sometimes. That was super silty. Obviously, Sooty's a lot higher with bigger tires, and I think I just fell in his holes, and that was me. But as soon as I stopped, I backed off, and we hooked up the winch. Got out pretty quickly, not too much water. So, uh, yeah, kind of a funky smelling car for a couple of days, I reckon. Not too easy. Here he comes. He's not going to hang around. Ready? Here we go. He's down, he's down. I'll come back, I'll come back. Got it, no, got it. Got it. You can see Peter's dropped in exactly where the D-Max did. Jeez, just enough traction. Nice work, mate. <laughs> Pretty wild. It's deep, isn't it? Yeah, so you just have to back off the bottle, don't you? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. And just keep, Started to go it down. It starts chugging, chugging, chugging. It grips, yeah. it grips, and then you're away. Little left, little right. Just slow, slow momentum well, on mate. it just to keep on top of it. Yeah, very well done, mate. Very well done. Awesome. Stay on it. Yeah, that's good. Nice, nice. You've done it, you've done it. I feel like I need to go back and have another go now. <laughs> the two only got two or three wheel drive. Oh well, lucky last as they say. Oh, he's not hanging around. He does a race start. Wow. 
Oh, we lost him for a bit. Yeah, nice. <laughs> beautiful drive, guys. Beautiful drive. Oh, Love your work. Oh, he's going to hit us. Very good. Wow. Good job, man. I don't think your tent's wet from the rain, man. It's from all these river crossings you do. We couldn't even see you. Far out. <laughs> That was awesome. I think there was more traction in that one than all of them. Yeah, yeah not good. Starting to get it. Good. What was the speed of what, 80 or something? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, we're all through this one, but we've noticed a bit of an issue with the camera car. Well, it's a good idea, especially when you're doing a stack of water crossings, to keep an eye on your airbox. Now, what we've actually noticed, just by doing a little routine check, is one of the clips is broken, and the little, I guess, O-ring in here has got a lot of cracks in it, so therefore, it's not sealing. And when we go through water crossings, guess what happens? Water gets inside the airbox. Now, obviously you don't want that. Water goes into your intake, can cause your engine to hydraulic lock, absolutely blow up, detonate all over. So we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna use a bit of preventative maintenance. Um, in fact, I've got a couple of little bits and pieces and this is a good idea to carry this sort of stuff in your, in your little kit. Um, just some grease, we could use some grease around there to stop the water getting in. Even better though, we can use a little bit of silicon, like make a little gasket ourselves out of that. I have some cable ties, they'll come in handy maybe, or a ratchet strap. We just need to get some compression down on that and make a seal better. So we get that right, hopefully we won't have any more dramas of water getting into that airbox. With a bead of silicon around the pinch point, some zip ties to clamp down the lid, and we've sealed the airbox again. Well, that's, I reckon, better than Nissan factory, if you ask me. It's got a proper gasket behind it, and it's actually got a little bit of downforce on the top of that lid. Therefore, when we go through another deep water crossing, which will just be around the corner, that should hopefully seal nice. And uh, Jesse made a good point too. We've got a tarp. We could even put a tarp around the front of the vehicle as well and try and stop some of that water coming in. But that's not a bad bush side repair. I was lucky enough to get the Keyser Graham's D-Max this year for Cape York, so I made sure I packed everything nice and need to try and take good care of it. And one special thing I did, I sprayed it with some chassis shield protectant before I left. So that means basically when I'm on the beach, when I'm in the mud, it's just going to protect the chassis from all the sort of harmful things. And you can tell it really works. Whenever I go through a creek crossing, it's super clean on the other side. And uh, when I get back, I'll be able to hose it off and Graham mightn't even know that I've taken it. Yeah. Check out these massive big ruts beside the track. It shows you the power of Mother Nature. The water just rips down through here. That might have been the track last year. This is the track this year. Unbelievable. Oh yeah, this track <laughs> comes very close to the washout. Oh, you don't want really to fall into there, I can tell you that. That is one big crevice. Yeah, you wouldn't want to fall into that one. No, it's kind of nerve-wracking going to track past it. It's so amazing what water can do. I love the northern part of the telly because you've got so many of these crystal clear little waterways. We're going to drive through this one, but you can swim, drink a beer, great. Oh, it looks steep up there, mate. Yeah, it caught me out a little bit. That was so crystal clear, it didn't look that, that deep, but yeah, you caught it high. Yeah, why are your windows up for that one, boys? So I can stick myself up there. This crossing here is Sam's Creek, one of the most picturesque crossings of the old telly. Something tells me it's almost time to find camp. Super deep. Wow, it really is deep. Wow. Very deep. Pete's been caught out here. A quick line reset and he's out. But not without first giving those bilge pumps a workout again. Mate, a lot of water coming out the side of your car. <laughs> what happened then? A lot of water coming in the car in there. That's the line. Hey, Jess, you got a copy? Yeah, got gotcha, you, Shauna. Now, this does not sound like me in the slightest, mate, but I'm thinking we might even get a bit of an early camp because I've got a bit of a plan that revolves maybe 
going for a swim, singing a couple of tins and uh, doing a bit of a cook up. You in? Mate, I'm definitely in. We've had a couple of big days in the track, so if we get to pull up early for camp and have a swim and some cans, count me in. It's not long before we're all setting up camp and I'm sure the boys are stoked to be rolling out canvas a little earlier today. And with that, it's time to light up on firewood as tonight's cook up well, let's just say it revolves around the perfect fire. Got into camp a little bit early tonight, so I thought I might construct a little bit of an apparatus that's gonna help me cook up a bit later. Hopefully it pays off. Never tried this before, but I reckon if it works, the boys are gonna absolutely love it. Well, this is all happening. It is very rare we get into camp. It's this early in the day and I start cooking. This shows that I'm absolutely prepared. So you might've seen me build a little apparatus around the fire. You're probably thinking, what's that all about? This might give you just a hint. Jump in the Dometic now. This is one of the main reasons we got into camp early. If I grab this out, oh, does that give you a bit of a hint? Righto, so what I wanna do basically, if you haven't put it all together yet, I've made a rotisserie, a very agricultural one, but instead of taking a lot of kit out in the bush, we've basically built our own. So I've got a little bit of stainless rod that we're gonna use, and I've got these two beautiful pork legs here. Now I wanna pat these dry, because as you see, when you, when you get one of these porks out, they're gonna be quite moist, and um, we'll need to pat them down. So, oh no, don't. That all nearly went straight down my pants. Normally what you'd do is you'd score the skin, but this one's actually come pre-scored. In fact, the closer you get the scoring on a pork, on the fat here, and you want them nice and deep, the better it's gonna be for your crackling because it makes it cook nice and it got more surface area, basically. That's the science behind it. That's it, that's looking pretty good. When it looks like that, that's what you want. Nice, nice and close and together. Just really pat this dry. Look at that, no moisture basically coming off. That's what we want. Start with a bit of salt, and while I do that, let's give it a quick crack of pepper. Like I said, generous salting. Make sure you give it a good old, good old salt. Well, here we go. Like I said, pretty agricultural spit. I'm gonna need two people to make this work. How many times have you had a spit, mate? <laughs> go on. Oh, <laughs> a couple I'd of times, yeah. no doubt. Three or four, yeah. <laughs> no doubt, mate. Yeah, a good looking rooster like you, I wouldn't expect anything <laughs> less. Now, the hard bit, we worked this out, we're just actually talking about around the fire, and like this is a bit of an ongoing thing. It's quite hot, actually, because I've heated this up. What we're gonna do is we need to, normally they'll have a couple of spikes. Ah! <laughs> Super hot! I didn't realize, because that was where the sticker was. Yeah, so yeah, you burned that up, yeah. Burn. You can see that it's brown and hot. <gasps> look at that, yeah. right. This is actually from a barbecue place, so it's not just fencing Oh, wires. look at it's you go. Not, I've actually gone all out on this one, mate. It's food grade. Yeah. I think the difference between like off a farmer's fence and food yeah. grade is just an extra zero on the price yeah, tag. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's just a price tag in the packaging. And it's gonna be one of those things, Jesse, it's gonna be a bit of teamwork, this spit, mate. Yeah. And it um, goes with all spits, in fact. You got yeah, mates you can't involved. do it with one person. <laughs> I'm gonna get all the boys involved with this spit tonight. What I'm gonna do here is basically... Are you gonna, <laughs> are you gonna calculate the middle there? I yeah. have. I think you're a bit low. I always get it in the hole, mate. Oh. You make your own hole sometimes if you can't find the there you go, straight through there. We have to really tie this up nice and tight. That's the key. So I'm gonna get that. It's a messy job. <laughs> it's very wet. I'd like to be able to get this tight. It's just really hard with slippery hands, you yeah. know? And I don't wanna touch you inappropriately in this I got process. a bit of roast on my toe, look at that. It's just, where's that other hole, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> really. You'd become best mates after one of these sessions, wouldn't you? Yeah. You gotta be quite close before you start to. It's have to feed. Oh he's done it, he's done it. Just have to feed that through. That's all we need, just a little bit through. Yeah, I think it's coming unraveled. It's... It is a little bit, but it's pretty good, Jesse. It's pretty good. Look, it's not perfect. There's no doubt about it. It's a very it. loose term, but pretty good. The big thing is, is it gonna spin? So I hold her up. Okay, well some of them sort of work. Yeah, there you go. They it's not look, it's not pretty, but they have to keep going, it's, keep it's, going. It's the same See? sort of bit that's gonna cook the whole time though. It's looking good, mate. <laughs> yeah, okay. Never judge a book by its cover. Yeah. 
There you go. There we go. That'll sit there. You're on, boys. That's You're looking on. pretty good. Well, my stays are on. My stays are on fire. This is not part of the program. <laughs> oh, well done, as. It's actually turning out way better than I ever imagined. We were sort of second guessing ourselves, trying to figure it out on the fly, but it's actually starting to look perfect. Now, every good spit roast needs a bit of a side accompaniment. So we're doing these little sweet potato cheesy bacon numbers. We're gonna roll them in foil. They're gonna go in the coal. So the whole night is around the fire basically, which is, makes it pretty cool. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna slice all these down. I'm just putting little slits. You don't wanna go all the way through. This is how a little sweet potato parcel is made. Get yourself a generous piece of this. I'm just basically making a little parcel like that. A little bit of bacon. A bit of cheese. Don't need two at a time in the spit roast over there, so I thought I'd come and help you, mate. <laughs> Some spuds, mate. Now you got Special to remember, spuds. this is the top, so the, the bottom goes in the fire. Right, yeah. There's one. And you brought the foil, especially no, for this, did I you? Actually <laughs> forgot. I actually forgot. Thanks for just bringing that up, Jesse. No, ours has got everything in that canopy of his, mate. Bit of bacon in there. Bit of cheese in there. No oil or butter? I've got a bit of butter. Do you want to bung a bit of butter or anything in there? No. You know what? I've actually got some butter in the Dometic as well. Yeah. That was supposed to be one of it. That's what I'm thinking. I'm just... Okay. That's one. If, if you jump in the Dometic, I'll be right up the end there. We'll get some luck, butter. Luckily, there's three oh. blokes over there. We'll give them to them and we'll oh, get no, the good oh, ones. No. That's quite a bit of butter. Do we need that much? Yeah. Look at that. No calorie counting around here. It was a good inclusion. Lucky you came around, mate. I didn't want to be that bloke that told the chef what to do, but I just... So no. hinted it to him. No, you had the right vibe, mate. With these spuds, there will be no dud. <laughs> they won't be. He's on fire tonight. <laughs> How good does that look? That is looking so good. Well, it's only fit we bring this meat on our shoulders. <laughs> I feel like hunters and gatherers, mate. Yeah. Look at this. This is a big difference from when it started off, mate. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna undo this one, start undo slicing it up. There you go, the wire's coming out. I'm gonna undo all that handiwork. Look at that, there's bits of crackling coming off. Unreal. Look at that, look at that. Do you reckon anyone It'd be rude knows? not to taste that, yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. It is so juicy. Yeah, they seem nice and soft. Well, these are cooked perfect too. This has come out so good, folks. I'm actually, I shouldn't say surprise in front of anyone, but. For you fellas, bring a plate, bring a knife and fork. We're on. Guys, help yourself, grab one of these. Grab some pork. Just use your fingers, fellas, jump in. Don't be shy. Grab a little bit, oh. 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 Hear that, hear, hear that. that. It couldn't be any better. Oh my goodness. Cooked to perfection. Well done, Chef Wayne. Well, very good. Goes to show, folks. Get yourself in the camp early. I'll tell you what, you can do something like this. Think outside the box. I've never done a spit in Cape York, and it's a pleasure to do it with you boys. So, mm. cheers to that, we'll gather around the fire. <laughs> I reckon wrap our laughing gear around this one. Good. Right guys, everyone's looking to save that little bit of extra cash where they can at the moment, and I've got the perfect way to do it by servicing your four wheel drive yourself, because at fourwheeldrive247.com, you can save up to 25% off Castrol engine oils for your four-wheel drive. Whether it's trying to give you a four-wheel drive a service or just desperately needs an oil change, now's the time to jump on it because this deal isn't going to last too much longer. It's going to be running from now until the 17th of August. So jump on to 4 247com save yourself a bit of money, service your four-wheel drive yourself, and you'll be laughing. It's our final morning on the old telly track, and in front of us lies some of the most iconic water crossings Cape York has to offer. Mistake Creek, Logan's Crossing, and of course the infamous Nolan's Brook. We're not even sure if we can make it the entire way through, but the boys are all keeping a positive attitude. I've got to say, mate, there's one little thing, and I'm not blowing smoke up your skirt or nothing, but <laughs> you probably 
drive this train canopy package harder than anyone else in this country. I mean, the amount of times you put the thing literally on the side it's of the canopy. It's always on the bank, isn't mate, it? It's always on the bank. It's got scratches and dents all over it. Yeah, you've got mud, <laughs> mud, mud, mud all over it. Yeah, it's all going to be back now, but, yeah, but it shows you've got, you got scrape marks all the way down it. But obviously everything works. Everything yeah. on the inside, of everything course. Everything on the inside is beautiful. It's is absolutely looks like it's coming out of the showroom, even yeah. though I've been on the road for literally three weeks now. Yeah. And um, I do notice one thing, like while the train canopy is the same every time you come on a trip basically, yeah. you do change the interior a bit. Yeah, depending on the sorts of trips. You know, we've got the glassy trip, so we put the short one on. But this one, it's a big trip, it's about three weeks, so I've thrown the works in, you know. I've got a couple of different shelves, drawer and table. Yep. I've even got a closet on the other side. A closet, <laughs> far out. You've got a pantry, you've got an yeah. upright fridge. Yeah, I reckon for a single bloke, it's a bit much, but you know, no, it's for it's a family of four fantastic. or five, this would be the ultimate setup. Time to get packed up. I reckon we've got the wettest half of the telly coming up. And you're probably thinking, heck, you've seen us do some pretty deep stuff already. We really want to get right through the old telly. It's gonna be a huge sense of achievement to get from the start to the finish, with all the tough tracks in between. So fingers crossed we can make it. I think the little tip for today is anything valuable, get it nice and high in the vehicle. Time to pack up and get into it. Soon enough, camp is packed down and we're almost ready for the huge day. Deep crossings is one thing, but coming up next is one challenge that'll throw the wind up any red-blooded Aussie. Cypress Creek. The one crossing where the smaller the vehicle, the better it is. Usually, this gets washed away after every wet season. However, to our surprise, it's still standing. It's a little bit sketchy. It's one of those ones where, touch wood, never had a drama, <laughs> but if you did get it wrong, ugh, it'd be ugly. We've only uh, seen a few more cracks in that main log before you come down, but yeah, it should be right. This might be my 12th or 13th time across this bridge, and I'm just about as scared as ever. <laughs> it always gets the wind up ya. I don't like it! I don't like it! No! Now, it's time to think skinny thoughts. Don't give us those faces, Jesse Gleason. I'm in the point of no return. Too easy, mate. You didn't even look scared. I managed to keep a cool face and cause the heart was doing these <laughs> ones, the butthole was doing those ones. I'm just glad to be on this side. <laughs> Pete never shows any nerves at all, and I think this challenge will be no different. He's going to come across here cool as a cucumber. That way, a little bit. Nice work, Pete. Probably the calmest bloke to cross Cypress Creek. Beautiful. Righto, Liam. Time to think skinny thoughts, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I'm just trying to talk myself into it. Liam's up next, and it's no secret that 200s have a wide wheel track. Hopefully you fit across this one, mate. So I'm shaking my head in disbelief. It's doing it. You're doing a good <laughs> job. It's a perfect line. My eyes are stuck on you. Well played, mate. What a rush. Well, we can give Cypress Creek a big old tick. That wasn't too bad. Oh, bit... got, some, got some gnarly ones coming up next. Exactly right. Two of the most infamous water crossings the top end has to offer. Mm. We've got Logan's yep. and then Nolan's. Both mm. have probably claimed more cars written off completely than just about any other water crossing in Australia. We haven't seen them yet, but yeah. I can tell you one thing for sure. There's going to be a lot of water, and we're going to have to chuck soot in first probably and see what happens. Next up is Logan's, a long, deep, soft and murky crossing that often catches a lot of people out. And this year, it seems that the entry is super soft. It's known for being deep, this one, born and hot. Here you go, yeah. here, here you go. And it's, it's very silty too. Right, plan's pretty simple. I'm gonna nose onto the water's edge. Pete's gonna come behind me, and if I do go down, I reckon it's gonna be in the first 10, 15 metres, maybe 20. He'll be able to pull me backwards and we can reconsider. <laughs> Well, seatbelt off just in case. I don't. How <laughs> good, Sooty. 
leading the pack once again. Easy done. Easy done. Not a worry in the world with the big crossover. I think it's lucky I walked that because that would have been my natural mine, but it just felt good underfoot. Radio, here comes Pete. He's off the line, nice and steady. Low tire pressures, cruising, cruising. The high side. Mad high side line. Pete's opted to take a different line here, but it shot him straight across to the same line as Soot. Nice throttle control, mate. You beauty. That was a good one. Did attraction in the bottom, I reckon. I reckon we, I reckon we could do that, as. <laughs> Worst case, we both get stuck real bad. <laughs> With the D-Max being the lightest vehicle in the convoy, I'm opting to hook on the back of Az for this crossing. We're so close to the end, and it's just not worth the risk of potentially flooding the vehicle. No pressure, you've got to get two of us through. Suck it up <laughs> Send it, eh? Yeah. Rodeo, big dog, you ready, mate? Yeah, ready when you are. Second gear, low, go, go, go. Oh, there he is. Got a crisscross now. Still got grip! We're moving! This is loose! Wow! I think Whoa. we've got it! Whoa. We've got it! Yes! Whoa. Whoa. We've got it! <laughs> That's <Yeah>. us! <laughs> Woo! You must have gone from middle to about yeah. 100. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I thought he was revving as a joke. I'm like, I won't take out that fast. I'm like, oh no, he, he is taking off that fast. Back. Can't work. <laughs> well, you're on the safe side, mate. Wow. Well, <laughs> Liam's lucky last for this one. Bugger. Fortunately, Liam's taking a bit of a creative line through here and ended up in the deep mud. Now the problem is, of course, we're all on that side of the creek, so it's got to do a bit of a self-recovery. So the only way we can literally go forward without driving another vehicle back is to put some max tracks under. So three wheel drive, so three max tracks, one on each tire with drive, and hopefully we'll be able to Get him out of here. In situations like this, it really does help to ease the load on the winch. And that's what we're doing here. With the max tracks under the tyres, it's a nice safe winch pull. That's it. Well Liam's not taking any chances here and hooking up a snatch strap as a precaution. Speed. <laughs> Who doesn't love that sound? Yeah, I swear it did float over to the left, eh? Look at that! Phew! It's true, finally! <laughs> Solid drive, three wheel drive. Thank God I'm through there. Logan's tick. Done and dusted, almost, and uh, almost got through by a thread, I reckon. That's about to say, mate. <laughs> almost wasn't a tick. Poor old yeah. Liam down the back there. Um, it goes to show, though, all the vehicles came through, mm. got stuck on his own, and um, heck, he could have been camping over there. He could have been, yeah. But luckily, he's got through. Telly track, I can feel the end, mate. Mm. It's getting real close. Yeah. With the convoy across, that marks our second last challenge, done and dusted, and leaves us with one final crossing before reaching the tip of Cape York. It's not long until we're nosing up to Nolans. This is one crossing that has claimed more vehicles than just about any other challenge in Australia. It's a bucket list location, and this year, it doesn't look any easier. Wow. The infamous Nolans crossing, eh? It's black down there. It looks, <laughs> when it's black, it's usually deep. We normally go through this one or the one beside it. I think there's only one way to find this out, mate. Where's, where's Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> Picking a line can be a bit difficult. Some can be shallower, but prove softer underfoot, and while others, well, they can be deep but have a firm bottom. It pays to explore all the lines before attempting this one, as taking the wrong one could absolutely prove disastrous. Normally that's the line, but that was over Sean's head, so there's gonna be some water inside cars, I think. <laughs> it's gonna be very deep. That's the deepest I've ever seen it. With our line picked out, it's time to knock a few extra PSI out of the tires. 
This really is a secret to Nolan's Crossing. Get those tyres down to around 10 PSI and idle your way through. So we made a bit of a plan anyway to get across Nolan's. We've swum, walked, all the different tracks. It is definitely the deepest I've ever seen it. So I've actually got a fair bit of winch rope already out. The boys are actually gonna, like walking a dog, but walking old sooty, they're gonna grab the winch rope as I drive through. If I get stuck, they're gonna put me onto the recovery gear. We'll have an extension strap already set up. Hopefully, I'll be able to swing straight into a bit of shallower water because if I get stuck in the deep bit, it's about window height. I'm gonna have water up to about here inside the vehicle. Like I said, very, very deep. It's not just the deepest Nolan's crossing I've ever seen, it's also probably the deepest water crossing I've ever tried. So, wish me luck. This is heart in your mouth sort of stuff, this is. Come on, Sooty, you've got this. In, but I'm making it. I'm making it. We're just doing it nice and slow. I can't see it. First car always a tough, tough and job. Did it oh, easy. Fire yeah. pressures and a couple of good mates. That'll do it every time. <laughs> Pete's up next, of course. Jesse's going to run the winch. We're going to do the same thing we did with Sooty. Um, he shouldn't have any dramas though. His tyres are right down, and uh, he obviously knows how to steer that thing. So fingers crossed it all goes well. Yeah, I'm, I've got to say I'm a little nervous. So a long way from home. <laughs> really does show you folks at home how deep this is. The rear end of Pete's GU is floating, but he's across. It floated. And the pumps are on. <laughs> the vehicle actually went sideways and floated. That's the real risk with, even with a heavy vehicle like that, you just get so much water, it's so deep. The vehicle started floating away. <laughs> Still a fair bit of water came in, those Nissan seals. No 80 series, are they? Well, mate, that was too easy. I, I had a plan. I yeah. thought I'm just going to low tire pressures, I'm going to idle through. Yeah. You didn't even need low tire pressures. I don't think the tires touched for much I think of that. You were floating, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as is up, and as you see, we're like a well oiled machine now. Everyone's got their stations. Slow and steady. Here we go, as. Smooth sailing. Idling through. There we go. Yes. A little bit of water touching my feet. That's all good. Nice work, mate. You made that look easy. I'm up next in the D-Max, and after watching Pete float across, I reckon I'll play it safe and hook onto the back of ours. So what we're going to do is actually going to have some snap straps connected to the front of the D-Max and have ours on the other end. So sort of as soon as I start to float, ours is going to take off nice and slow and uh, hopefully we get not much water in the DMX. I'm sure we're gonna get some, but try to limit it as best we can. When we're ready, as you just have to go super slow so we don't launch it up the windscreen. Nice ending at this time. I'm through, thank you very much Alex. The D-Max actually drove that, the, the strap was loose the whole way through until he got to the shallow end, but it really does pay to be quite cautious. It's a light vehicle, we're worried that that's going to float, judging by Pete's vehicle that really floated off into the bank. We thought the D-Max didn't have the weight to get the traction, but it shows it did, and uh, he's through, so that's good news. And he's not even that wet by the looks of it. Well, Liam's up next and he's lucky last. He's got the bonus of watching the convoy drive it, but he'll also be following the dugout wheel ruts. Good luck here, mate. Oh, oh, I'm not sure if he's got it here. Oh, she's deep. I feel a bit of, a bit of float. Oh, oh, just enough traction. Oh. Woo! <laughs> that was kilometers from making it or breaking it. Oh. Thank goodness. <laughs> he just got through beautifully. The tyres were spinning, you can see all the sand silted up. It's starting to dig a few holes, I think, now. 
Oh man. That was awesome. I thought you were stuck a couple of times yeah. in the front, grabbed that big bank and you cruised straight out. <laughs> was I floating? Yeah, well, the back was definitely floating, yeah. You could definitely feel it, just that yeah. bobby feeling. Yeah. And just like that, the old Teletrack is almost done. To be the first convoy through for the season is a huge milestone, and to be honest, I wasn't even sure if it'd make this. This has been our wettest Cape York adventure to date, and to be under our own steam and jumping back onto the PDR is awesome. Well, there you go. No one's done and dusted. A little bit wet on the interior of just about every single four-wheel drive in the convoy, but that's not going to stop the lads from smiling ear to ear. Everyone has had an absolute blast, and for most of them, it's been their first time up the old telly. Heck, doing it this early in the season with so much water around, I reckon it's going to be a trip they'll never, ever forget. Now, as the tour leader of this group, there's one more stop I think it would be wrong of me if I didn't take the boys to go and see. There's a very famous landmark that I reckon everyone would be pretty keen to get a photo right next to. With that, we're back on the PDR and heading north. A quick trip across the Jardine Ferry and we're edging closer to our final destination. To finally make it the entire way to the tip of Cape York has been a mammoth undertaking and it's been our wettest Cape York adventure to date. To open up the old telly track for the season and reach this spot right here is something I'm sure all the boys won't forget in a very long time. Well, I've got to say, lads, we bloody made it. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's been a tough trip. Started at Hun River, but we finally made it to the time. I'm going to be honest with all you guys. Jesse and I were the fearless tour guides trying to take you guys <laughs> the <laughs> ultimate. Fearless. <laughs> yeah. Okay, tour guides that trying to take you to the top of Cape York. For a lot of this trip, I thought, you know, if we finish the telly, it'll be nothing short of a miracle. Trust me, you could go a decade of four-wheel driving up here and not see the conditions we've got to see. Mm, yeah. I mean, going into Palm Creek, there's been zero tyre tracks. Cockatoo, no one had driven it for the season. That was there's, loose, that was loose. We'd have to build our own tracks <laughs> half the time and just be a guinea pig, jump into fast-flowing croc-infested waterways just to try and make it to this sign. So when we get here and you're, and you're wondering why we're smiling, <laughs> that's why. it's been yeah, that's quite, why. quite the adventure. So folks, we're going to leave it right here, but do yourself a favour, make the effort, make the adventure, get a selfie with that sign, because trust me, it'll be the most rewarding photo you ever do in your life. Till then, cheers. See you next time. Coming up next, of course, is the Four Wheel Drive 24-7 outtakes. Well, as usual, that was a great... Ah! Here! <laughs> hoo -ah. Happens every now. Yeah, I get excited. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Az, he's our man. Az can't do it, no one can. Az, 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 Az. Don't stream here, there's nothing to lose, guys. Don't flood, okay? Don't. <laughs> She's wild in here. She's wild. If I could turn back time, I would find a different lane, go a different way. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. <laughs> oh, the way you threw that radio right, was wild. I had to get out of go. <laughs> You're out of a job, Chewie. You're out of a job. Back to photography. Put them back there. You don't need them, but that area's not working yet. Family photo. <laughs> Liam's getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Instagram. Hashtag, hashtag Cape York 23. Hashtag, hashtag tour guide. Of Cape hashtag York. tour guide. Hashtag take you on the hard lines. Hashtag oh, I've got really dirty pants and I'm a grub. Yeah, this track doesn't doesn't let up. Oh, I'm in a rut. And I'm gonna have to reverse. <laughs> hey guys, this I gotta reverse. <laughs> <laughs>